Hi, I'm Dr. Alexandra Jones, historical and community archaeologist. And I'm Delon Justinville, doctoral student in bioarchaeology. Welcome to our Tiny Lecture, part of the Tiny Lecture series hosted by Archaeology Now. The material choices of African Americans trying to make a better life for themselves in the form of purchasing property, building churches, and fraternal orders and associations are scattered all throughout the landscapes of the Mid-Atlantic region. It's really interesting to be recording this tiny lecture during this time because of the ways that the current moment ties to our topic. For instance, during the pandemic, one of the issues that were brought up early on, I would argue, were questions around burials. Where will the bodies of recent victims of COVID-19 be buried? And whose bodies were being rendered most vulnerable to the pandemic, thus constituting the majority of these deaths? This is especially important for African American communities when considering the ways that we have had to navigate tending to the dead and dying amid precarity. Deland and I both conducted archaeological work around the topic of the ancient United Order of Sons and Daughters, Brothers and Sisters of Moses, an African American benevolent society. Benevolent societies were incredibly important institutions for the African American community as they collected dues that funded not only burials, but other essential services such as medical care, loans, and support for deceased widows, as well as funding a rich range of social activities. National insurance companies systematically discriminated against Black people in their policies until the mid-1900s. Yet, policies for life and burial insurance became available to African American communities through these benevolent societies. I was introduced to the community of Gibson Grove in 2008. During that time, a fire had burned down the historic Gibson Grove AME Zion Church, located in Cap and John, Maryland. They needed an archaeologist to come in and assess the property in order to rebuild and expand the old historic property. One of their congregants had told them that when she was a child, she heard that two members of the community, both young girls, were buried somewhere on the church property. And in order to proceed with the rebuilding of the church, they would have to have an archaeological assessment. In looking around the local community for an archaeologist who would be willing to assist, I stepped up and was willing to come in and aid the church at the time. The church expressed to me that they would like to repatriate the bodies of the young girls in the historic Moses Hall Cemetery. Being that most of their family was buried in the actual cemetery, they wanted them to also be with their loved ones. Wanting to comply with the request of the church, I had to conduct a survey of the historic Moses Hall Cemetery. Upon entering the cemetery, I immediately noticed that it was overgrown with vegetation and bamboo. I would have to do a complete cleanup and clear the cemetery in order to identify in which location these new burials could be placed. In addition to that, I had to assess how many people were actually buried in this cemetery. Based on the documentation that I received, the county had only listed seven burials. I could easily see that there were well over 20. This was gonna require some work. This is the introduction of a community archeology span project. In order to accomplish the goals that the church wanted, I realized it was gonna take far more than me and my small team of volunteer archeologists. I immediately contacted Montgomery County Archeology span uh, Department to get advice on where I could find other people to help. The local chapter of ASM stepped up and decided that they would help me come in and properly clean the cemetery as most of the members were retired archeologists or people who had been trained by the ASM in order to do archaeology. In addition to that, I called and reached out to all the members of Cabin John's current community and asked them if they would come out and help. What preceded was one huge day of cleaning up a cemetery where everyone came out. They were willing to cut bushes, cut down bamboo, um, in order for us to identify who were the people who were residing in this cemetery. Little did I know this would be the beginnings of a much larger project that would continue for years to come. What was uncovered 
was that the two little girls were in actuality not buried on the property of the church. They were buried at one point on land that had already been developed. In addition to that, I was told that the cemetery potentially belonged to Gibson Grove AME Zion Church. It did not. What actually came out from this study was that this cemetery, in fact, was owned by the ancient order of sons and daughters, brothers and sisters of Moses, the Morning Star Tabernacle number 88. The ancient united order of the sons and daughters, brothers and sisters of Moses, was founded in 1872 by Peter Paul Brown and spread throughout the Mid-Atlantic region over the course of the next two decades. According to DC permits, in 1885, White Tabernacle 39 purchased two lots in Tenley Town in order to build their two-story wooden hall. In 1911, one year after its official incorporation, White Tabernacle purchased land alongside River Road in Bethesda, Maryland for the reinterment of 147 of the burials in its cemetery due to the pressure of developers and urbanization more generally. However, it wasn't until 1914 that Congress officially approved the reinterment process, though there is no official record of its execution. White's Tabernacle 39 later sold the property in 1958, and as a result, the cemetery was removed from the landscape. Morning Star 88 was established for the purposes of maintenance and education of orphaned children of the deceased members, for burial of its members, and to take care of the sick members of their society. All of the members of the Gibson Grove community were also members of Morning Star 88. The adults, women, men, and children all participated in this benevolent society. They had juvenile uh, membership as well as adult membership. In addition to this, they owned and operated a hall similar to the one that Deland mentioned in DC. It was a two structure building made of wood with concrete floor and it was decorated and painted brown. The hall had many functions. It served not only as the meeting house for Moses Hall members, but it also served as a rental facility. It served as a place where social gatherings were held, dances, and religious gatherings and events. As we've conducted more research on the histories of these particular Moses orders, what we've started to notice is that Morning Star Tabernacle number 88 and White's Tabernacle 39 had a lot more in common than just the fact that they were lodges in a larger benevolent society. Members of Cap and John both belonged to both lodges at the same time. Charles Brown was a trustee in the White's Tabernacle 39 while being a member of Morning Star Tabernacle 88, as well as George Fry held dual membership in both of the tabernacles at the same time. There's an oral report that states, in the late 1960s, a teenager in the night committed arson and burned the Moses Hall. It completely destroyed the building, leaving nothing but the foundation. And this is where I enter again with the archeology. span Upon clearing the actual cemetery and looking at what was there, I started to uncover elements and clues about the history and the past of this vibrant community that had once been lost. With archeologists at my side, as well as historians, community members, descendants, and other members of the community, we have now started to piece together the whole story of what was taking place in the tabernacle and on this particular property. Sites like these are important and are being destroyed every day within the United States. Help us preserve these and others throughout the country by looking up the African American Burial Ground Network Act. This act is being pushed before Congress to help ensure that we protect our collective heritage as American citizens.